and we will see who pops in here. Alrighty, everyone, welcome to our virtu virtual college exploration for all Missouri students sponsored by the Missouri Association of College Admission and Counseling and Stripe Scan. Thank you all so much for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenter at any time. Your camera and microphone are off and they will stay off um, so your panels cannot see or hear, hear you during this time. This is just one of the many different sessions that are happening, so make sure to check out the full schedule of our sessions at noacac.org. This presentation is also being recorded, so if you um, need to revisit this presentation at any point in time, please make sure to check out again, moacac.org. And now I'd like to turn it over to our presenter. All right, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Kim Perrett, and I'm with Sacred Heart University in Fairfield, Connecticut. And I'm just going to start my little presentation here. Bear with me just a second. All right. It's not looking like it wants to start. Let me try something else. Okay, well, it doesn't want to do the full screen, so I'll just go ahead and uh, just go from slide to slide. Again, my name is Kim Perrett. I'm Director of Regional Admissions at Sacred Heart University, and here's my information, um, my email and phone number, uh, should you have any questions for me afterwards. Um, let me just tell you a few little things about Sacred Heart University. We are located in Fairfield, Connecticut, um, about 50 miles from New York City. And on to the other side is Boston, about two hours away. So we're really located in a fantastic area for uh, internships and careers, things like that. Uh, we're kind of nestled along the Long Island Sound, so it's a really beautiful area. Uh, we were founded in 1963 by the Diocese of Bridgeport. We are a Roman Catholic University, and Sacred Heart was actually the first Catholic university in the U.S. Um, that was founded by lay people, which basically means uh, we don't have um, uh, nuns and priests on our campus. Uh, so we just have just a regular president and, um, and vice presidents as well. So we are called the Pioneers. It's one of the reasons why we're called that. So that's our mascot. Big Red is our pioneer mascot for Sacred Heart. We are the second largest Catholic university in New England. Um, and the largest, I believe, is Boston College. Uh, our undergraduate enrollment is about 5,400 and growing. We're in a very big growth mode right now at Sacred Heart. Our total enrollment with graduate students is well over 8,000. All right, just a, a few little national recognition things uh, that you might be interested in. Um, we are one of the most prestigious universities in the nation, according to U.S. News and World Report. We have the number one program in physical therapy uh, in Connecticut, uh, also the best nursing program in Connecticut. Um, we are number 18 for most religious students, number 10 for most students engaged in community service, and that is in the nation. So uh, that's something we really pride ourselves on, and I'll talk about community service uh, in just a little bit. Uh, according to the Chronicle of Higher Ed, we um, are one of the top 10 fastest growing Catholic colleges in the U.S., and we have one of the best undergraduate business schools in the nation. Also a good college for your, your investment as well. So first I'm going to talk a little bit about um, academics at Sacred Heart University. You can see by these photos that we are a very hands-on learning community. Um, we do have some awesome classrooms uh, and they're very high tech, but as you can see in these photos, we're a get up and do things type of university. Our academic classes just make sure that students are doing hands-on work and really immersed in the field that they choose. 
We have about six colleges at um, Sacred Heart for you to choose to study from. We have a College of Arts and Sciences, a College of Education, a College of Business and Technology, a College of Nursing, a College of Health Professions, and we also have a two-year St. Vincent's College for Associates and Certification Programs. We have 60 plus majors and concentrations and a still deciding option as well. I like still deciding a lot more than undecided as a major. We have 40 plus masters and doctoral programs and several of these can be combined with your undergraduate program so that you're, you have an accelerated um, degree. Uh, you can get out faster, get out of college faster with your uh, bachelor and master's degree. We offer individualized attention in the classroom. Our average class size is 22 students. Student teacher ratio is 13 to 1. So I'm just going to go over the different colleges um, each individually just to share with you some of our majors. So our College of Arts and Sciences is probably the largest one. As you can see here, there are several um, majors that you could choose from in the arts and sciences. But I wanted to highlight over here the um, School of Communication, Media, and the Arts. We have some really unique majors in that area, including sports communication and media. Our location is a pretty excellent one for sports media. We're close to ESPN. We have a lot of um, uh, national sports teams uh, in our area, in the New England area, and so we get a lot of interest in sports comm and media. We offer the strategic comm, pu public relations and advertising, um, the immersive media, mixed reality. Our theater arts major is also in this school. Um, which is another big area for us because of our proximity to New York City and then an awesome art and design program too. And you can tell over here that we have a lot of science majors um, and that really stems from our uh, College of Health professions. So a lot of students major in biology, chemistry, neuroscience, um, different things like that and then pursue a degree in the health fields. And we also have a pre-med track as well. Um, we have some traditional liberal arts majors in this college as well. You can see those listed down below here. And for our College of Education, we do offer the elementary and secondary ed, but this is actually a master's degree program. You really can't get a bachelor's degree. What you do is if you're interested in education, you get your um, your bachelor's degree in um, one of these majors here, either interdisciplinary studies, if, you're, if you want to teach in elementary school, or um, in a specific subject area if you want to teach secondary, like high school. And your fifth year uh, at Sacred Heart will be your internship year or your student teaching year, and then you will end up with a master's in education. We have our Jack Welch College of Business and Technology, which is um, one of the areas that uh, Sacred Heart is well known for. Um, we have a lot of undergraduate business programs available, and some of these I just want to highlight uh, because they are pretty special for us and, and larger majors. So there's sports management. I keep mentioning sports because we're a very athletic campus, and uh, we have several um, D1 teams, and so sports are a big part of Sacred Heart. We have a new um, hospitality resort and tourism management major, and we actually added this major a couple of years ago because we acquired, when we acquired our new West Campus, we now have a hotel on campus. So this provides an opportunity for students to be able to um, actually work at the hotel while they're on campus, which is awesome. And we've added as well this fashion marketing and merchandising major. It used to be a concentration area in marketing, but uh, because of demand and because of our proximity to New York City, uh, we now have this as a full major. And the other part of our business and tech area 
are our undergraduate technology programs. So we offer engineering programs in computer and electrical, computer science, game design development, cybersecurity, and information technology. Um, these are some excellent majors and they are just growing as we speak. Um, we're hoping to add to those engineering programs, um, possibly, hopefully in the near future, a mechanical engineering major. For our College of Health Professions, yet another area that Sacred Heart is well known for. Um, our uh, undergrad programs, there aren't too many in this college, but that's because many students do uh, take those biology and chemistry majors as well to go into these master's programs. Now our master's programs in health professions are, um, are the ones that you can kind of do that accelerated program with. And you actually are able to get pre-admitted into these programs as an incoming freshman. So if you're interested in a health field, like one of these that's listed here, or a doctorate program in physical therapy, you can actually apply as an incoming freshman to Sacred Heart. And you can um, be pre-admitted into one of these programs provided that you have a minimum GPA of 3.5 and nothing less than a B in your math and science courses. So this is a great way if you're a planner type person to know exactly where you're going to be in six or seven years because you'll be in one of these programs because you're already pre-admitted to those. So these are excellent programs and, you know, if you are interested in these, I'm happy to talk with you some more about um, the opportunities there. And um, our probably our largest major at Sacred Heart is our College of Nursing. It is a direct entry four-year program. It's uh, very competitive because it is the number one in Connecticut. It's top 10 in the country. Uh, excellent faculty. And we have a brand new, well, it's not brand new. It's three years old um, uh, building of health professions and uh, with nursing state-of-the-art simulation labs for nurses. As you can see in this photo here, um, these students are not at a hospital. They are in a classroom on campus. So um, these are the types of facilities that we have at Sacred Heart. Uh, we have a the NCLEX pass rate, that's the exam that you take uh, upon graduating with a nursing degree, is 97% or higher um, when students take it for the first time over the last five years. We do have some uh, master's programs in nursing as well and a doctorate for nurse practitioner. So just a little more about our academic life at Sacred Heart. Um, we do offer an honors program, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, there are plenty of study abroad options. We have a great first year experience program to really make sure you stay engaged during your first year and that you have help um, kind of navigating through that first year. Our Center for Career and Professional Development really helps you starting as a freshman um, to get maybe a job off campus or on campus or an internship. Uh, we can help if you're not, if you haven't decided on a major yet as well. And speaking of that, if you're still deciding on a major, you don't need to panic about it. Uh, you have until the middle of your sophomore year to declare your major. And we have a lot of resources to kind of help you along the way. And we will, um, you will have your own freshman advisor to help with that. We have some freshman seminars. If you're not sure if you wanna do business or technology or just one of our liberal arts majors, we have different seminars in those areas that can help you make that decision. Our honors program is uh, something that you will be invited to uh, if you choose, uh, if you choose to, if you have the grades, if you, um, if your resume looks good, your um, 
uh, academic standards are good, we will invite you to join our honors program. So we do have a living learning community uh, where students in the honors program do choose to all live in the same residence hall and uh, they have their own advisor. They take a lot of the same classes, so it's nice to be living with uh, students who are in your same classes as well. They have a lot of different activities as well. And uh, for study abroad, we actually have two campuses abroad. We have one in Ireland and one in Luxembourg. So you can choose to do a semester or a summer or two week program abroad at one of our campuses, but you can also uh, choose from about 30 other countries that we have um, affiliations with. Our first year experience program, I talked about that a little bit, but this just goes a little bit more in depth for that. Our freshman um, advisor can really help you get on the right track to what you want your major to be. And once you declare a major, you will have a specific advisor in that major. In the first year experience, we do require that students meet once a week for an hour and just have different programming. We have some speakers. We have uh, time management type of seminars. It's just to really help you focus on getting through that first year and making that transition from high school student to college student. And um, as I said before, our Career uh, and Professional Development Center is always there to help you with your um, career choices, your resume building, your interview skills, um, internship searches. We just like to make sure that our students are ready to take that step once they graduate and get into that perfect job um, that is for them. It's a great networking area as well. And you can always come back uh, even after you graduate and have our career office help you. So one of the most important things about going to college, aside from academics, is to get involved in student activities. Um, I know firsthand that it uh, students make better grades who are involved in different clubs and activities outside of academics. So we have so many choices. Um, for things that you can be involved in. Here's just a short list here. We do have over 60 clubs and organizations that you can join. Um, anything from just fun and social clubs to academic clubs to um, foreign language clubs. There are just uh, many, many opportunities uh, for you to have that involvement outside of academics. We have a very active student government, so if you've been doing that in high school, it's a great opportunity to be able to do that um, in college as well. Um, we do have a Greek system. We have about nine sororities and about seven fraternities. I would say close to 40% of our students are involved in Greek life and those organizations are very philanthropic. There's always some type of cause that they're um, doing charity work for. So it kind of um, fits in with what Sacred Heart is all about and our um, commitment to community service. We offer Division I athletics at Sacred Heart. I mentioned that before. Our teams are the shoe pioneers, and we just added our 33rd sport this year of women's wrestling. So we have 33 D1 sports, 32 club level sports, and several intramural um, activities that you can be involved in. So I would say probably at least two thirds of our students are some type of athlete, even if it's just an intramural kind of having fun on the weekend type of sport. But if you don't love sports, um, at least I hope you love to watch sporting activities because there's always some kind of game or competition going on on our campus. Super fun. 
And our performing arts area, I mentioned that before that we do have a theater arts major, but we do have some extra activities like several band organizations, several dance organizations, um, several choral groups that you can join and you there's no real limit on how many you can join it depends on how much time you have and those activities actually um, offer a little bit of a scholarship along with them so um, it's always nice to have that little bit of extra grant money and also be able to do something you love to do even if you're not majoring in the music area our campus ministry program is very strong. Of course, we are a Roman Catholic university with our beautiful chapel in the middle of campus. And campus ministry does a lot of volunteer work in uh, surrounding communities around Sacred Heart. And also they do mission trips overseas. Um, obviously not doing that this year because of COVID-19, but hopefully next year that will uh, continue. And last but not least, volunteer programs, community service, again, such a huge thing for Sacred Heart. Our biggest activity that most students are involved in is Habitat for Humanity. So we have a lot of students going around uh, nearby communities to build homes for people. It's a wonderful thing. And now I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, living on campus. We do have plenty of residence halls, so students can choose to live on campus um, all year. Uh, I mean, all four years or just two years, whatever you prefer. Uh, this is a photo of our new upper quad. So um, unfortunately, it's not for freshmen just yet, uh, but four, four years of housing are available. Um, you must live in university housing for the first two years, and then you can move off campus. We have um, some virtual tours uh, on our on our website, and also um, if you just search YouTube, you can look at these halls as well. And I'll just go through a few of the um, freshman residence halls. We have Burton and Seton halls. Those are kind of our old standards, been around uh, for a while. Uh, this is kind of what the inside of one of the rooms in Burton and Seton looks like, but it's located right in the heart of campus, so very easy to walk to your classes. It's a perfect location for a freshman. We have double and triple rooms, and these have uh, the bathrooms per floor. And of course, a swipe card access for safety. Our Roncalli Hall is just across the street from Merton and Seton. It's a 10 story high rise. So a lot of our living and learning communities are housed here. Like most of our business students will live um, on the same floors because they have team projects, they have speakers that come in. So it's just very convenient um, to have those students uh, living like near each other. These are double and triple rooms. They're sweet style. There are common lounges and study rooms and a first floor fitness area in this building. And our next one is to St. Hall. This is the newest um, freshman residence hall and it was just completed uh, three years ago. And this is where our honor students can live as freshmen. It's beautiful, you can see the lobby there. It's just gorgeous with the fish tank and just plenty of space to spread out and study or hang out with their friends. It's pod style living, uh, four students to a pod. Um, each one has their own separate little space and then a uh, half bath in the pod and common shower rooms. Bergoglio Hall is another one of our beautiful and um, fairly new uh, residence halls for freshmen. It's also pod style with two doubles joined by a shared full bath. This is a beautiful lobby here, as you can see, and really nice uh, room spaces as well. There's also a multifunctional multimedia room there and a fitness facility uh, just around the corner from the lobby too. Um, so SHU is, very, is growing, as I said before, um, we are in a huge growth mode, not only with student numbers, but also with programs we offer, and for uh, the best part is new facilities. So it's always great to be on a campus 
that's growing. You can see the construction going on, and that's exciting. Um, all students love new, pretty, clean buildings, and that's basically what we have right now. So our Center for Healthcare Education, I spoke about that before. This building was just completed in 2017, and you can see our large uh, uh, room there for uh, lectures, like a biology lecture or something like that will happen in here. And you won't see a classroom larger than this one at SHU because we believe in the small class sizes. These are photos of our West Campus, and this campus here um, we acquired about three years ago. It was the former headquarters of General Electric. Now, General Electric and Sacred Heart have always had a close relationship. Jack Welch, the former CEO of General Electric, um, is who our business college is named after. So always had a great relationship there. And when they moved their headquarters to Cincinnati, uh, we acquired their, I guess, campus, so to speak, the GE campus. And it's now our West campus. So you can see here, it's two uh, large academic buildings that we have. And over here um, in the corner, uh, this little strange looking thing here is actually a hotel and uh, you enter from here and it's underground. So uh, there's two floors of hotel rooms and then on the bottom, a big, beautiful ballroom. So that's really why, as I said before, we added that, um, that hospitality management degree too. And this campus houses our business and technology college and also our college of education. And also in this building here is our 10,000 square foot maker space for students. And you'll see a picture of that in just a minute. We have so many new academic spaces because of the acquisition of the GE campus. So we've got some state-of-the-art classrooms. It's really nice spaces where students can just um, have room to spread out, to meet in groups. We have the rolling desks that, um, that help with uh, team meetings and things like that as well. This is our photo of our idea lab, our 10,000 Part of our 10,000 square foot maker space. IDEA stands for Innovate, uh, Design, Engineer, and Apply. So students can come in here and just be completely creative um, and they're doing some pretty amazing things. And I mentioned before our uh, residence halls for upperclassmen in our upper quad. You can see these were completed um, residence halls now, and they're just absolutely beautiful. And that's this front of this picture is what is uh, the upper quad. The lower quad will be built down here. This is just an artist rendering right now. So it's, um, it's happening. Construction has already started. So um, before long, this upper quad will probably become uh, eligible for freshmen to live in as well. And then our, our juniors and seniors will be uh, back here. Our uh, Bobby Valentine Health and Recreation Center is um, just an amazing place. You can see how beautiful it is on the outside. It's also beautiful inside. Bobby Valentine is our athletic director, and you may recognize that name from baseball fame. He was a major league player, a major league manager. He actually started a league in Japan, and we're just very lucky to have Bobby Valentine um, back in Connecticut as our um, AD. So uh, he decided that because we have another rec center where our teams can um, practice and students can go and work out, uh, he felt like students didn't have enough space for being athletic and being um, and working out if they wanted to. Sometimes students would be kicked out of the old rec center because uh, a team had to come in and practice. So he decided to build this absolutely amazing new facility. Um, it's just gorgeous. And it has, here's a couple of photos of the inside. And I 
not sure why uh, this presentation doesn't have a photo of the bowling alley that's on the bottom floor and also the uh, rock climbing wall as well. So students are loving this. It's absolutely free for our students and they can just go in um, and enjoy and work out uh, whenever they would like to. We also have this fun diner. This um, was put on our built on campus in 2017. It's called JP's Diner after our president, John Patillo. And it's just a fun place. It's pretty close to our football stadium and really close to the rec center. Um, great place for students to just hang out if they're tired of the cafeterias on campus, which there are about eight other dining facilities on campus. But this is a fun place to just go and hang out, get some really bad for you food, but also there are plenty of um, health option, healthy options as well. So I'm going to just talk um, a little bit before the session ends about applying to Sacred Heart. Uh, we use the Common Application exclusively, so it's very easy um, to go on commonapp.org and start to fill out your application. Here are our application deadlines for early decision, and that is a binding um, application, is December 1st. Our early action one is December 15th. December 15th is also the priority deadline for the College of Nursing. So if you're interested in nursing, definitely get your app in by December 15th because um, it is a competitive program and so we definitely look at the students who apply by December 15th first. Our early action two is February 1. And after that, we will still um, accept applications on a rolling basis. And our requirements for our application, uh, Sacred Heart is a test optional school. We have been for about the past 10 years. So we require your high school transcript, at least one letter of recommendation. And an interview with an admissions rep is highly recommended, especially this year, because we're not, of course, getting as many visitors on campus as we would like to because of COVID-19. So um, if you are a student in Missouri and you're planning to apply, definitely go on our website and schedule an interview. It's most likely that your interviewee will be um, Sarah Koloski. She uh, usually takes care of our Missouri students and uh, she couldn't uh, do this session today. So I'm covering for her, but I will have her information uh, on the last slide. And our average GPA uh, for non-nursing students is around a 3.4 or 3.5. Average for nursing is around a 3.7 or 3.8. Um, I believe that just goes up every year. It just gets more and more competitive. So make sure if you're applying for nursing, you have really strong GPA, especially in math and science. Um, for additional um, application information, uh, AP credit will be accepted with a score of four or five on the AP exam. IB credits will be taken with a score of four or five on the exam. And if you are transferring in some college level classes, um, those will transfer with a C or better. And for financial aid, we do offer merit scholarships. Um, everyone who applies to Sacred Heart will receive a merit scholarship. Now the levels obviously depend on what your GPA is, you know, where it falls um, uh, from 3.0 on up to uh, 4 point whatever you may have. Uh, we do have uh, other grants available. I mentioned before, dance, choral, band, um, things like that. I think we have a biology scholarship as well. So there are plenty of other smaller type grants that you can apply for too. And any additional aid like federal aid, of course you have to fill out the FAFSA. And for our institutional aid that we may be able to provide for you, uh, we require the CSS profile. And you can get to that through collegeboard.org or a link is also on our website. And those uh, two applications opened on October 1, so now is a great time to start filling those out.
And um, just wanted to talk a little bit about our visit programs at Sacred Heart. We do offer a lot of virtual info sessions, open houses, Q&A chats, obviously virtual interviews are happening, and definitely check with your high school. We may be visiting your high school virtually as well. But you can find out dates um, for all of these at www.sacredheart.edu slash visit planner. And we are actually welcoming visitors on campus, but you have to be sure and follow the Connecticut government rules as far as quarantining is concerned right now. Uh, so don't plan a trip just yet. Um, hopefully we'll be able to welcome a lot of visitors this spring. But for right now, be sure if you are planning a trip to Connecticut and you'd like to come visit campus, be sure to check um, the Connecticut government webpage just to make sure that you have the all clear. All right, and I'm happy to take questions now. Um, I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Um, I don't see any questions in the chat box. Um, so please feel free to type in a question if you have one. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions. So um, thank you so much for listening and um, hopefully uh, we'll hear from you soon. Thank you. Alrighty, everyone, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, when you close this window, there will be a very quick four question survey. So we'd appreciate any feedback that you can give us. Um, make sure to remember that you can sign up for more sessions at moacac.org and a recording will be available of this session. Up by everyone have a great evening. Thanks so much. Bye. Thank you.